Hello, how's it going? In this video, I want to talk about um, double buffered component sets. Why you might want to implement double buffering on your data. So you might, you would probably be familiar with double buffering in general in computer graphics. For instance, if we have a color buffer, we'd have one color buffer, which is presented to the screen, another color buffer, which is our render target and that's being worked on in the background. And then periodically we flip them around and this just ensures that we are not displaying data that we're currently working on. Turns out the double buffering pattern can be extended to the data that we operate on in our game. If we have a set of components or a set of data, it doesn't really matter. And we want to update its state based on its previous state, but also the state of all of its neighbors. So all the other elements within that set. And we want that update to appear as though it's independent of the order that things are defined. Then this is a case where we might want to use double buffering. In some cases, in some simple simulations, you can actually get an accuracy increase by using the future time step where that information is available to update the current time step, but not always, especially not for complicated sort of AI decision sort of things, if that, if you know what I mean. So code is linked down below. It's down there, but I'm just going to briefly step through this double buffered component set. So we've got a component set. This is from my other data oriented C++ stuff, but um, it basically holds, you know, a set of entities and components and stuff. Where was I? And let's say we want to have two of those. This is like a, a ping pong buffer. We'll have like an A buffer and a B buffer. And the B buffer will be, I guess we'll say the future buffer, which is going to be updated based on the A buffer. Anyway, point is we have two of these component sets and we have this index. I've just got this set as a bool so that I can easily flip it from between a zero and a one. And as you can see here, we're just using both the index and the complement of index. So the A buffer and the B buffer will always be different. And then upon flipping, we'll just flip that index around. So the B buffer becomes the A buffer and so on. So the update that we performed in this time step now becomes the old state of the system. I also just have some functions here for inserting and removing. It's really simple, just insert and remove into both of the buffers pretty much. And as an example for how to use this, I've got a sort of elastic mesh. So just go over to my world update, have a bunch of uh, positions and uh, velocities. So again, the A buffer is always the old state and the B buffer is a new state that we're updating. We go through some stuff. We, it's a little messy, all the text, but the basic idea is we're using all the information available to us in the A buffer in order to do some calculations. And then we're writing those into the B buffers. So we go ahead, we update the new positions and velocities for every particle, upload that to the GPU and then flip around our buffers. Anyway, the point of this was not to go super in depth in my code, but I do think it's good to have something to look at because it looks nice. So let me just pull this up. There we have it. So this may not look super exciting. Let's get a bit closer and look at what it's doing. I just think it's, it's nice to have something to look at, you know, whoa, that's pretty funky. Here we go. This might make it a little clearer. So imagine we have a, a piece of fabric. It's secured on all sides, but there's some wind blowing on it. The point of this wasn't really to show my simulation. The point was to talk about the, the concept of buffering component systems. With this concept in mind, you can do all sorts of interesting things, not just meshes. 
But yeah, just wanted to put that out there. Okay, so I hope you found this interesting. Hope you got something out of this. Maybe you think about how you can apply this in some of your own systems. If you've got some particularly tricky logic, this might help. But anyway, that'll be it for now. As always, have a great one, and I will see you again soon. Bye. I done came down and I'm flossing Griffin grain with a piece and chain Diamonds glossing off and diamonds on my coffin Cause I'm dead inside but I still slide by In the candy red ride